How's it going everybody? So as a follow-up to the video I made a couple weeks ago covering how to anchor B on Mirage, now let's talk about how to defend the A-bomb site. But before we get into all of the nuances of how the professional players are holding this site, I want to thank today's sponsor, Skins Monkey. So, Skins Monkey is an automated CS2 trading site that provides an instant way for you to get new skins. All you have to do is select your old skins that you don't want anymore and then pick out some fresh ones to trade for. It's as easy as that. And right now you could get a free $5 if you use code tactics on the site. And finally, you could get up to a 35% deposit bonus when using my code. So thanks again to Skins Monkey for sponsoring this video. Links in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. Before the recent changes to the incendiary grenades, at the professional level, you would see this incendiary grenade thrown every single round. It would bank on the right side here. And if you notice on the old patch, there's a massive flame tower that's completely obstructive for any of the T's trying to peek you as you're crossing towards connector. This is what the incendiary looked like on the old patch. And this is what that exact same incendiary would look like on the new patch. Notice it still completely obstructs that area, but notice how much quicker this flame tower dissipates. After, you know, maybe one to two seconds, that tower drops straight down to where there's way more room to look over it, which is why a lot of times you'll end up seeing oppers go for more frequent boosts on top of it, to where after a second or two, you'll notice they're able to see straight through and pick anyone that ends up crossing late. So definitely keep that in mind. It is way easier to get a shot on through here. So here's an example on the new patch from IM Dallas where Donk uses that same exact incendiary to cross safely. And here's an example from the next round where Donk has picked up a T-side Molotov, which is a little bit bigger, so he ends up throwing that one instead. And if you'll notice here, Zaibu actually goes for the boost peak, but he's unable to spot anyone through it. So it definitely seems like this incendiary is still 100% meta, and the best way to throw it consistently is if you run right through this gap, you're just gonna aim at this top right window here and just run through and release as you're crossing this region here. There's not that much thought that needs to be put into it. It's not that precise. You're just gonna aim right here and do a nice little run through. It should land right here on this position. It's gonna be very obstructive at the very beginning of it. And of course, it's gonna make it to where they can't jump up into this position without getting ticked by the Molotov. Previously, a lot of times you would throw it closer to this wall, but now that's gonna end up leaving a gap with these CT incendiaries being a lot smaller. The other essential early round piece of utility that you're going to be throwing almost every single time is after you throw that incendiary grenade, you're going to come up here and do a nice little run jump throw to flash for your mid players. This is an extremely helpful flashbang that's going to blind anyone going for those early peaks, and it shouldn't blind any of your mid players. As you can see here, it's going to end up popping up above them. So it's a little bit of a one way team flash that you can throw. Typically, you're going to see players throwing it by just like aiming around here and doing a nice run jump throw. There's not, you know, it's not all that precise. You can throw it however you want as long as it's landing up there around that region it's a good flash to throw. So here's an example where Rain's thrown that flash right after throwing his early round molly. He's gonna toss a little HE in there to soften up anyone that's waiting out the Molotov, and then he's gonna transition into more of a mid-round setup. So in this round, Frozen has the better spawn, so he's gonna be the one throwing the incendiary, but Rain is still throwing that flash for his mid players. If you'll notice, they end up having a player run through that Molotov, and it's very easy for them to deal with it. And if you've been playing passive for most of the game, a lot of times you can get away with an aggressive pace change by taking aggressive control of ramp here. As you can see, Rain gets up really close here, clears it out and takes an unexpected angle where he's able to catch a bit off guard and almost bring down Wonderful as well. Crazy enough, Rops ended up going for the exact same play the very next round with an op and gets an easy pick onto JL who was not expecting that type of positioning. And here you'll see at IAM Dallas, Flamesy had a bit of a different approach to this type of aggression. He ends up getting close up into this corner and then playing anti-flash while Zaibu is actually holding for the wide swing. Once a bit of pressure gets put in, Apex flashes for him and he is able to bring down two players before getting traded by Shiro. So here's another example of an early round aggressive play you can go for. As you can see, Brolin's able to bring down Mezzi here for the opening kill and escape out without getting traded inside of Palace. So now that we're kind of past openings and you're definitely not gonna be going for aggressive 3Ks every single round, let's talk about those mid-round setups that people like to get into and what are the good positions. So a lot of times you're gonna see pros favoring the top of balcony here. As you can see in this clip, Brolin is set up in this position is able to get a lot of damage off from this position as a part of this defense. Now, of course, this type of positioning is only viable whenever you have Palace smoked off, and if you have someone like Shuhei in a good position to be able to trade and crossfire with you. As you can see in this situation, they're able to peek and play off of each other down to perfection. And here's an example of Rain in the same exact position here, and it's able to deal with an eco push without any issue whatsoever. 
For a more passive A defense, this setup from VP where Electronic stays back towards triple and Fame tucks into Sandwich is extremely powerful. This is a good setup for a normal A execute since they have a nice cross star to deal with both Palace and Ramp, but what makes this even better is the fact that it works well against a mid to connector push from the T's. As you can see in this situation, Electronic is able to fight both connector and ramp without being exposed to both at the same time. This puts a lot of focus on him after he kills the ramp player, which Fame is able to kill two players with their backs turned. So obviously from that last clip, you can see how powerful of a position Sandwich is, but what do you do whenever your a side partner dies in mid? You can see Magix responding to this by pushing up and taking space A main, which would allow his teammates to get in position to help him out. Unfortunately, there's not many of them left by this point, so he has to take matters into his own hand and is able to bring down two players right off the jump and even get a third for the cherry on top and is almost able to bring down Wonderful to set up a winnable 1v1. Another super common setup you're going to see is one player jump spotting from CT ticket with another player in connector where he can support both mid and the A site, but with the expectation that they're probably going to get smoked off as a part of the hit. And of course, that's exactly what happens here, but Flit decides to push through that smoke to catch two phase players off guard. Off the back of that, Electronics able to activate from CT and pick up another frag, giving them a man advantage at the very beginning of the round. And of course, Triple and Default are also solid options if you're by yourself as well. It just kind of depends on how you're planning to play off of your teammates once they come in for the rotate. Anyways, guys, I hope all this is a good overview of how professional players are playing Mirage these days. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like or a comment down below. And if you want to support me, go ahead and click that Skins Monkey link down in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next one.